Finland Saga Season 2 Episode 10 The Cursed Head It's a new day. <laughs> After the last episode, feels different. Time to get to work. The rebuild. The farm ends up being such a great metaphor for the both of them. Building something beautiful. And it got torn down! And we start over, just like Thorfinn. Alright, stop showing off. <laughs> put, some, put some clothes on. God damn. And they're felling larger and larger trees. Making it look easy. <laughs> Bro hug! That was way more than a shoulder pat. Oh wow, they actually did all of it. Damn, that's a crazy feeling. Uh, Thorf is laughing again. He's laughing. He's laughing with his soul from his heart. What could go wrong? <laughs> what, what could possibly go wrong? Let's enjoy it. Let's enjoy this moment of glory. That actually is amazing to look back at and think. I didn't realize three years had passed, but it makes sense. Maybe one day. There you go, you got a new goal right there. You get free and you build your own farm. Oh no, does this... But the downside of this, the tragedy of it is this means potentially no no more no more tree cutting scenes, which I, for some reason, love so much. What am I going to do without my tree chopping quota? That is unbelievably lucky and amazing that they ended up here. I actually get money. I mean, while your gifts. Right. Yeah, you don't even know the half of it, I think. You're assuming she wants to be free, or you're assuming she wants to leave. He needs her lap for crying. He's still got family. Yeah. Imagine him just showing up, seeing his mom and sister. You're crazy. <laughs> Whatever we're doing, we should stick together. In a way that's hard to explain, they're already kind of free. Because they're on the climb. Their souls are free. They see it happening. They have visions. About what? Whoa! Oh, that's all? <laughs> that's all you're gonna do? This tiny goal? Go for it. Honestly, if I was in their position, I would still be... I'll be anxious. If you have a grand vision, sometimes the closer you get to achieving it, the greater the fear that something will happen in the meantime, that some obstacle will spring up that you didn't foresee, or that you did, or that you can foresee. Even if things have been promised, you don't know for sure. You want it in hand before you can breathe that sigh of relief. And even then, sometimes it takes a little while to really absorb what's happening. Wow. Uh, this makes me more suspicious. Not of him, but we're so close. <laughs> uh, it's a shock. That's what I'm saying. Oh no, oh no. Is it, it's conditional on him, right? And that's the moment I knew that he dies. <laughs> he dies abroad. Oh. Please, yeah, please, safe tr He's dead. Uh, uh, this is awkward. Thanks, but... Well, Arnheed, Arn, Arn, Arn Arnheed is here. All that hard work. It's almost there. They're so close. Still, feels good now. Feels good now. This is somewhat connected to what I was talking about last episode. It's kind of div divine force where people are as they should be, even in 
in tragedy. There's a pathway to heaven with which it seems like sacrifice is almost an inevitable part. Another way of thinking about it is all things, all events, all material, all matter contains the, the DNA of existence itself. And so you containing that same DNA, perhaps being a, a fractal of that same information, are not there in a vacuum. You're there for a very specific reason or because of a very specific set of circumstances that are connected to that whole. So there is meaning and purpose in, in every endeavor. Perhaps one point of variance, though, is how much it does for you because the universe, while while having something like benevolence, I feel, is also cold and detached, like both are true. It's more committed to a process or like a higher thing, like potential or growth or whatever it is, synthesis, to which an individual person's destruction can actually fit well. Death and destruction in a localized way often being essential or harmonizing that, that process. So I guess it's like, how conscious is it? How much is it for one's individual journey. And I think the answer to that question is going to come down to something like awareness, being awake, having realized autonomy or fought autonomy, having your eyes fully open. Oh, there's more. He has also said eternity in their heart. <laughs> Without the possibility of mankind will find out the work which God has done from the beginning even to the end. Huh. Very interesting quote. I should read the Bible. And war. Back to war. Maybe. Possibly. Probably. Is Harold? Oh, it's Canute. He really grew out that facial hair. Grew out that facial hair. Damn. This... Who are you? <laughs> he looks so badass. I feel a Canute Thorfinn meeting of destiny. You know, Canute also wants peace, but doesn't have the same kind of oath Thorfinn does. He's kind of like peace by any means, which is dubious. That also means he can crush Thorfinn if he chooses. The next step for Thorfinn is being tested, I guess. Where's the leaf, by the way? Just came to mind. Oh, I'm a little bit unclear about the whole hierarchy or structure of their kingdom. Maybe you guys can explain. They're both kings, right? The relationship is an interesting one, especially considering their father tried to kill one to support the other. Hey, look who it is. It's uh, Matt, I forgot her name. I'm sorry. Right. Ragnar, right. This this dotingness. Ragnar just was who he was. <laughs> He's just shocked that he was, he was able to stand up of his own volition. Good old mother Ragnar. Just a little bit. Just a little bit overprotective. You did it! You stood up. <laughs> I knew you could stand up. Honestly, it's kind of a surprise that their relationship was so good. I mean, Canute sort of fell into this relationship, this dynamic, and it weakened him initially. And so he became more dependent on those doting on him. But honestly, I think in those kind of situations, you might expect some kind of resentment. Kids who are overprotected or their lives made too easy, a lot of the time end up lashing out at their supervisors. <laughs> It looks like a nice summer day. It's a weird example of like the, the kindness of the unkindness of kindness. Oh, he's talking about his brother. What's with that side eye? Is that suspicion? Okay. Thorfinn's not the only one. Interesting parallels developing here between the two of them. Damn it, Asta! Huh? He says with great pain. A lot of wounds being triggered with Harold's death. Okay, that's what it is. Two kingdoms. I guess they were they managed to survive or were somehow insulated from the father's treachery. Haraldo 
Are we going to have another, another、uh, secession problem? Let's Knut get Denmark. Knut is going to get Denmark. It's also the last of Knut's family, right? Okay. Alright, that makes things easy. Huh? 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 Was his father? Oh my god. Okay, that explains a lot. That explains all the emotions. Damn, Canute. The crown, man. Crown lusts for power. Has a will of its own. It's fitting that his father's the one delivering this monologue. He warned him. There it is. This is such a perfect back to back episode. We had Thorfinn last episode meeting Thor's, his father, who gave him a prophecy or something to remember, which was you have no enemies. Now you have Canute having the same experience with a very, very different message and going in what seems to be two very different directions. Also, you got Thorfinn in his mind being rejected by his father. And Canute being understood by his. This tree looks very familiar. But it's okay because it's for peace. It's all for peace.、It's、the beating of the hideous heart. It almost blew his cover. People are going to get suspicious. It's fine. Just feel a little bit guilty about poisoning my only family and friend. Well, you got it. He's right to be suspicious. Yep. That's a sinner's curse, always seeing sin even when it doesn't exist. It's like people who are unfaithful to their partners. Oh no. Oh no. Now you gotta kill her too, she knows too much. One of these days, you know, one of these days we'll get an actual utopia. All the other people who tried before, they just、uh, they weren't doing it correctly. But me, I will be the one. True paradise on earth. Speaking of legacy, I'm just accepting it. This is fine. This is good. <laughs> This is very healthy. Everything's fine. It's just so sad, man. It's so freaking sad. I didn't know, didn't know anything about Harold until now, really, but he seemed like a good brother at least. A little frail Canute. Let's be brothers forever. We <laughs> wait to on the nose. Well, he became more powerful. Tell me more about this, these titles. And it's all gone. Everyone's gone. Scorched Earth. Am I interpreting that correctly? That was awfully cold. But it's okay because it's for Utopia. It's for peace. I mean, it does have an oath. It's just not a Thorfinn oath, not a Thor's oath. And it feels delusional to me on multiple levels. I mean, firstly, it's just, as I've said a million times, I don't like this I'll create hell to create heaven thing because it's guaranteed you'll get hell and it is not guaranteed to get heaven. In fact, it's probably guaranteed that you will not get heaven that way. And then another source of delusion is that it really is even about that stated aim. There's someone else in control. There's something else in control of Canute. It's not just well wishes, right? It's a compulsion. Is he really? Even in control. It's challenging because a lot of times when you have compulsion like that, the compulsion itself takes a grip of your rationale. 
so that you're using your mental faculties, your logical faculties, to come up with a reason why you're doing it and a way to justify it. Not realizing that the thing itself is controlling those very faculties. So you're compromised. There's no way, or it's very difficult, to gain any real insight in that situation. You're in a loop where the, the craving is controlling the rationale for why the craving is good. It's true of addiction. It's true of infatuation with other people. It's true of a lot of things. In fact, I think that's why in Alcohol Anonymous, one of the, the steps or one of the underlying philosophies is to surrender to a higher power that's not you because you're, you're too wrapped up in it. You need to make the locus of thought and control something other than you because it's so deep already. Canute just feels gone at this point. The first Canute episode we saw was, you know, not great. Yeah, I obviously had concerns for him, which I expressed, just seeing his whole means justify the ends outlook. But at the same time, at that point, he was at war, right? His enemies were trying to kill him as well. Assassinating their leaders, one could argue, or he could argue, actually was a way to spare lives through, you know, preventing a drawn out war. With Harold, that's rough, man, because that's your, that's your brother. That's the inner circle and someone who showed him love. One of the few people he has who seems like he could trust.